push out just throughout that whole golf swing. Okay. And that's what the golf swing feels like. So that's what most pros are feeling like as they're swinging. Does this look like you? Yeah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> it does look like you. That is you. That's good. Yeah. That was well done. Uh, lead elbow flex is what we're talking about today. So that's the amount that your elbow is flexed and it's relative to three points. Your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder. The angle difference between those three points is your lead elbow flex. So if my arm is as straight as I can get it. It's close to zero degrees of elbow flex, but I can bend my elbow uh, 90 degrees and now my wrist, elbow, and shoulder form a 90 degree angle. So there's what you're looking at. Better players tend to look like Connie on the right, 10 degrees, and the worse you are at golf, will be a direct correlation to how much your elbow is flexed at the top of the swing. Not to say that you can't get away with having your elbow flexed at the top of the swing, but big difference between 10 and 76. So Connie, let's start at address. Okay. You take it from there. All right, so I've made two very different golf swings that we, as we can see here. And as I'm taking the club back here on the left where I'm making very poor backswing, I'm separating my elbows here. You can see that right here. And it's pretty bad, Connie. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And we can actually have a look at that number there compared to my normal golf swing on the right there. So a big difference between zero degrees and 32 degrees there. Yeah. So you started at seven, and then by the time the shaft's parallel to the ground, with both these swings, you started with seven degrees of flex-ish, pretty close to that. Now your, your worst swing is at 32 already. Does that feel like pretty typical of amateur yeah. golfers who struggle with this? Yeah, it's definitely something we see a lot here at Golf Tech. And I think the main reasons as they're taking it back, they're pulling their hands towards their body yeah. rather than pushing outwards. Yeah, they don't know how to actually keep their arm from flexing. And yes. it's really one uh, quick pro tip in there, straighten your arm more. We're gonna do that in a second. Then on this swing, you went from seven degrees flex to zero. Yep. Good big, demonstration. Big difference. All right, so let's go all the way up to the top and then keep, uh, keep rolling. Yeah, okay. Now that we're on the top of the backswing here, you can see if we don't look at the numbers, we can really see from the picture a significant difference there. So here on the left, that elbow very bent. Okay? And what most people will do in the start of that downswing, you see them un pulling their arms down really hard. And that causes that elbow to bend even more. Mm -hmm. Okay, And you can see that shaft now gets really close to that right shoulder there. Yeah, so you might be watching this at home and maybe you have a friend who almost hits themselves with the club on the downswing. I'm sure that's not you, it's always your friend. Yeah. But if you do, this could be one of the causes. It's the, the way that you bend your wrist, so the radial deviation, plus flexing your elbow, and pretty soon my hand is almost hitting me. Yeah, here's a, here's a great way to sound really clever to your friends. Next round, tell them what to do. Yeah, yeah teach okay. them. All right. All right, so as we go into that shaft parallel to the ground position there. This is an important one to get right. Yeah, this is a big problem. So when we have those arms separating so much, all right, that club head is now going to start digging into the ground as we get into impact. And you either do one of two things, you either pull up and cause that lead elbow to bend even more, all right, or you're going to throw it down and this club head is going to stick right into the ground. Mm -hmm. You yeah, uncock your wrist uncock too your soon wrist, yes. and you could smash this thing into the turf. And here you are with the 49 degrees of elbow flex at impact versus your normal swing, which is basically what you had at the top of the swing. Went from close to 10 to 13 here. And not much difference there. Yeah, and, and the uh, important part to get right is when the shaft's parallel to the ground, you've got the 17 degrees of flex. Now from here, the best players are always straightening their trail arm to some degree, and a good pattern to have would be to straighten your lead elbow too. Your arm should be straightening through the shot. Uh, that's a, a general rule. 95% of PGA Tour players are going to fit into that. And you can see how your arm straightened from 17 to 13. And then it straightens a little bit after the ball, too. That's an important part to get right. Meanwhile, at Golf Tech, we see this a lot where the elbow is straightening, but that difference between 25 and 10 is a pretty big deal. Oh, yeah, for sure. Should we show everybody how to do this? Yeah, let's right, do that. Let's do it. Tell me what to do, Connie. All right, Nick, I've got a few solutions for you, and okay. we can try them for yeah. any viewers at home who 
I want to try different options and get a feel for which one works best for them. Okay, let's go. What's right, the first so one? first one is we actually mentioned it earlier where we're going to get into our dress position, we're going to stretch our arms out, we're going to try to feel like we're going to push our palms into the ground and feel that stretch as we're taking this back into our backswing there. Good. We're going to want to push out and maintain that push. Yep. Same that thing feeling. on the downswing too. Yeah, really we're gonna just pushing keep your that, arm out. Yeah, we're gonna keep that push out just throughout that whole golf swing. Okay. And that's what the golf swing feels like. So that's what most pros are feeling like as they're swinging. All right. Their arms are pushing outwards. Got that. Okay. What else you got? All right, second option. It's a good we, tip, by the way. Yeah, it's, a, good start. it's a great feeling. I feel that as okay. well. So another one would be we can actually use our right hand and grab our left wrist. And then our left hand's just gonna be very soft okay. at this point. And we're actually gonna use our right hand to stretch our left hand straight. And then we're gonna keep that stretch or that push out with our right hand into that backswing there. Same feeling. Okay, it's actually just gonna do the same thing for us, but just in a different way. Yeah, different way to describe it. Yeah, so. So don't pull your arm out of your socket, no? step one. Yep. But it should feel like you're protracting your shoulder, pulling it forward as you straighten your right arm. Yep. And just try to keep that stretched out as much as you can. Okay, yep. two solid tips. Which one do you like better? The I prefer the first or, one. Okay. That's one uh, that's one that I use personally. Okay. Because I struggle a little with my left arm bending as well. I know, I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. We're not talking about you in this <laughs> one, but yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, uh, a way you could do this at home is grab your golf tech app, grab the swing record feature, and film yourself. Make a swing. You don't even need a club. You can see how we're just demonstrating and practicing without a club. Uh, where you make a normal swing, maybe you have the 45 degree or 76 degree elbow bend like Connie demonstrated and swing, then do a few of those drills like Connie did of just film yourself with, uh, uh, you can keep going too, that's the best part I think about the Swing Record app right now. I can make a swing um, and then the, the OptiMotion system that's built into that recognizes there's a swing and it trims it. Then the next one, don't even go back to your camera, just keep the record feature going and make another swing where you keep your arms really close together, your hands, and feel that pushing out through the whole swing. OptiMotion will then recognize you made another swing and trim those up. So that, that way is a quick comparison for you. Oh yeah, and it saves you so much more time that yeah. you don't have to keep trimming it yourself, yeah. right? Did you even know it did that? Um, I do now. I know, so there's a simple way to do it. Then uh, what do you do from there? Start chipping some balls, yeah, filming your swing again? Try to implement that into your golf swing slowly. I would recommend doing this at home constantly, mm -hmm. almost every day, so you can get that feel and take with you yeah. when you go practice. They do arm swings at home all the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now we've got a little purpose. Push your arms out, make a swing. That's a better use of your time than uh, standing there watching uh, Scotty Shuffler on TV winning all these tournaments and, and trying to do what he does. Doing your uh, bending elbow swings. Yeah. That's not good. Yep. Nice tip. Good job. Uh, you know where to find us right here on YouTube and you've seen Connie do a couple videos with us. She's going to do a ton more. So thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.